Grade 6 math number 9.5, Rules to Subtract Integers. Subtracting a negative number is the same thing as adding a positive number. If we've got 5 and we're taking away a negative 3, it's going to equal 8. It's like Emma has $5 and Bob subtracts a $3 debt he has to her. Well, the only way to subtract a $3 debt is by paying her, right? So now Emma has $8. It's the same thing as Emma has $5 and Bob pays her $3, she has $8. Same thing. Let's look at it this way. We've got a positive 2, and we want to take away positive 5. Well, we can't because we've only got a 2. So we add the zero pairs until we do have five green ones, and then we take the five green ones away, and we're left with the leftovers of the three negatives. See? It's going to be the same thing as uh, 2 plus a negative 5. 2 minus 5 is the same thing as 2 plus negative 5. See? It's the opposite. Instead of taking away 5, we're adding a negative 5. It's the complete opposite of what this one is. We're going to end up with negative 3 because the zero pairs cancel each other out. See? Exact same thing. Exact same thing. All right, so subtracting integers. To find the difference of two integers, we add the opposite. It's the additive inverse of the integer we are subtracting a minus b equals a plus negative b. Instead of taking away a positive b, we add a negative b. So with numbers, to make it make sense, we have 4 take away 7, and it's the same thing as 4 plus a negative 7. See? We use the complete opposite sign, and then the positive 7 became a negative 7. It's the same thing. We're still going to get negative 3. Okay, because we're going to have added zero pairs and end up with three negative ones when we're left over. All right, 10 minus 8 is the same thing as 10 plus negative 8. If we've got 10 green positive ones and we take 8 of them away, we're going to have two left. If we have 10 green positive ones and we add 8 negative ones, the 8 negative ones are going to cancel out 8 positive ones and are going to be left with two positive ones, see? So remember, when we add opposites, it's subtracting, okay? Here's one called the missing add-end approach. This might be a little above your level, but I want to show it to you, okay? It says a is equal to b, I'm sorry, a minus b equals c if and only if a equals the b plus c. So let me put it this way. 3 minus 2 equals 1 if and only if 3 equals 2 plus 1. Do you see how that happened? 3 equals 2 plus 1. So that's using like more regular numbers without the negative and positive and stuff. So 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 if, if and only if 3 equals 2 plus 1. Well, yeah, that makes sense, right? So let's put some negative numbers in and see how that looks. 4 minus a negative 2 is equal to a number if and only if 4 equals negative 2 plus that number. What does negative 2 need to be added to to get to, ne to positive 4? Well, it needs to get over the hump of 0, so it needs to add 2 there, and then it needs 4 more to get to the positive 4. That's 6, all right? So 4 minus a negative 2 equals 6 if and only if 4 equals negative 2 plus 6, and it does. See? These cancel each other out, and we get a positive 4. And here, we drew 0 pairs and got rid of the negative 2, and we were left with 6 positives. Okay? So, when we subtract a negative, it's like subtracting a debt. It's like paying that debt. We end up adding money. Okay? It's like the opposite. It flips. So here's another adding the opposite. We've got negative 30 minus a negative 26. This is the minuen, this is the subtrahend, and the answer is called the difference, okay? We're going to add the opposite of the subtrahend. So instead of subtracting a negative 26, we're going to add a positive 26. We're going to add a positive 26, see? All right, so here's the absolute values. It's just how far away they are from zero. We're going to add the opposite of the subtrahend. Here's the positive 26. We're going to follow the rules for adding the integers, and we're going to get the absolute values. And then we're going to use the sign of the add-in with the greater absolute value. And it comes out, you don't know if you can read this real clearly, but this is, it equals negative 4. See? 
It's negative 4. When we have negative 30 and we add 26 to it, we get negative 4. If we had a 30-foot hole and we put 26 feet of dirt into it, we'd still have a 4-foot hole, right? If you owed Emma $30 and you paid her 26, you'd still owe her 4, right? All right, so here's adding the opposite again, all right? The problem says x minus negative 10 for x equals negative 18. Well, it seems very confusing, but all we need to do is put the negative 18 in where the x is. So I'm going to rewrite it. So instead of this, it's going to say negative 18 minus negative 10. All right, so remember we add the opposite. So instead of subtracting a negative 10, let's add a positive 10. There we go. Now we've got negative 18 plus 10. Well, if you owed $18 and you paid 10 of it, you'd still owe 8, right? So the answer is negative 8. See? It takes the sign of the larger absolute value, and that was 18. Let's try it again. We've got negative 16 minus m, and then m equals 5. That's not that difficult. All we have to do is rewrite it and put the 5 where the m is. No big deal. Negative 16 minus 5. All right, so we're going to add the opposite. So instead of subtracting a positive 5, we're going to add a negative 5. Negative 16 and a negative 5 together make a negative 21. See? And it takes the sign of the larger absolute value. And 16 was the larger absolute value, and it had a negative. So it's going to be a negative 21. All right? Here's the missing addend approach. We've got negative 12 minus y, and y is going to be negative 8. So we rewrite it as negative 12 minus negative 8, okay? That means negative 12 is equal to negative 8 plus something. So what does negative 8 need to be added with to get to negative 12? Well, it's got to go deeper into the negatives on the number line, right? So it's going to be negative 4. See? We'll get negative 12. So negative 12 minus a negative 8 equals negative 4. See, that was the original way it was written. Let's try the missing add end again. Okay, I hope you can see this because I know it's getting kind of dark in here. We have 9 minus 25 equals x. All right, well, the missing add end approach, what we do is we spin it around and say 9 equals 25 plus something. What can we add to 25 to make it a 9? We can add a negative 16. So 9 minus 25 equals negative 16, see? So the missing add in approach just flips it around and makes the minuend, the first number, the difference. It makes it the answer. It makes it the difference. And then all you do is you find the missing subtrahend, the missing number to make it equal that, okay? For the adding the opposite, whatever it says to do, we do the opposite. If it says to take away a negative, well, then we add a positive. If it says to take away a positive, then we add a negative. See? So, those are the rules for subtracting integers. I know this can get really confusing. If you have to watch the video again, do so. There were a couple videos I made before this that uh, explained subtracting integers that you might want to check out, uh, starting with 9.5. 4, A and B. You might want to watch those. And we're going to keep talking about integers, and we're going to start multiplying next. So if you don't understand this, you want to understand it before we get into multiplication, okay? Keep trying. I know you can do this. Bye.